Oh, hey over there. Welcome back to Zico Builds. Sorry I'm so far away, but this week we're building an eight foot by eight foot conference table. I want to start by apologizing about this video not coming out on Monday. Um, there were a couple of delays, like waiting for the table legs to come in. Um, but I'm thinking this will be posted by like Wednesday the latest. So it's, uh, it's a big boy. It's really massive. Like I said, it's pretty much eight foot by eight foot but it is really simple to build. Um, it's just really heavy. I needed extra hands just moving this thing around, but it's pretty straightforward. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So as you can see, this thing is absolutely gigantic. Um, I'm just using two sheets of five, mil five millimeter underlayment board. It's just like really thin plywood. Um, and these come in four by eight sheets, just like plywood but it's a lot easier to work with so I can get the template cut out exactly to where it needs to be. And then I can just um, flush trim it on my actual workpiece. Since this is so big, I think I already cut out the bigger side on the walnut plywood that I'm using, but on camera, I'll show you all the steps that I'm doing on the smaller, narrower side. I think I'll be able to get that on camera a little bit better. Um, so apologies in advance if I don't get every single shot that I need or if you don't really see close details of what I'm doing but this thing is huge so I'll try my best um yeah I already cut this side out so I'll go ahead and take you guys with me and cut out the smaller side all right guys so I went ahead and ripped my walnut ply down to pretty much fit the template just so I'm not working with a lot more material than I have to and I went ahead and traced out my template you can see have the shape traced out here and just to remove more material now, I'm gonna measure from that edge over there to, I don't know, about a half an inch above my line and just rip that down on my table saw. That way I'm working with as little material as possible. So I'll go ahead and measure that, set it up on my table saw and then rip it through and then we can cut out the shape. Now that I have a more manageable size to work with, I'm gonna go ahead and take my jigsaw now and cut out the shape, um, leaving just enough for my router to catch, but not too much material past the line um, that my router has to do a lot of work. So I wanna leave about an eighth inch, even a sixteenth, just as close to the line as possible um, without cutting onto my line, because then my router won't have anything to template route. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll go ahead and just start cutting away. All right, I have the rough shape cut out now, the rough shape cut out now. Um, now I'm just gonna plop my template right on top and use the flush trim bit on my router. And that should give us a nice, perfect match to my template. Just make sure we have enough hanging over on all sides. That's good scoop this up a little and since I will be laminating two pieces of plywood with the same shape just to give it a thicker tabletop um, I'm just gonna go ahead and fasten some number six screws to the workpiece um, and then I can just use the side that has the holes on the laminated side but I will be using number six screws so if I do for whatever reason need to use the side that I drilled into there will be smaller holes to fill. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and pop some screws in. Of course, pr pi uh, drilling pilot holes first, and then use a router to cut it out. All right guys, I have the first layer cut out. It's looking great so far. Um, you know, the work's kind of going by pretty easily since I have those templates. I'm just rough cutting it out and then using a flush trim bit on my router and tracing the template. 
Um, I'll go ahead and do the next layer, the exact same process. So there will be two sheets stacked on top of each other, the exact same shape um, that are laminated together. Once I have those cut out, I'll show you my gluing process. Um, I'm just gonna dump a whole bunch of glue on here. Uh, and then, since we'll have about a one and a half inch thick tabletop to connect these two together, I think I'm gonna use half inch or maybe even one inch dowels um, that go in pretty deep just to really support this seam here. Um, and then, yeah, once I get these next pieces cut out, we'll touch base and we'll go from there. Let's do it. All right, now that I have the top layer cut out and set aside, I'm gonna be working on the bottom layer that will be laminated to the top to give it that extra thickness. Uh, since this isn't gonna be seen, I'm just using radiator pine. It's not a walnut plywood, but I will have a walnut veneer on the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these shapes out once again, and I'll touch base when I'm gonna laminate the two together. Let's get right into it. All right, I cut out the bottom layer now, and I'm gonna glue everything up. I'm outside in my backyard because I wanna save my big workbench for the larger piece. So I just have a folding table here. But I'm gonna pour a bunch of glue onto the radiator pine, which will be the bottom. And then I'll just set the walnut piece right on top. And once I have everything lined up, I'll go ahead and put some plywood on top of this with some weights that I have, um, and just let that sit pretty much for the rest of the day. I did cut the bottom layer a little bit wider. That way I can just flush trim it to the top walnut piece and everything will be perfectly flush. So I'll try to show you guys the glue up. It's a little bright out here, but hopefully I can get some, some good shots for you. Now that I have my edges nice and smooth, I'm gonna get ready to veneer the edges. To do that, to prep for it, I'm gonna put blue masking tape or blue painter's tape on the face. That way if I spill contact cement on top of the tabletop, um, I can just peel off the tape and I'll be good. You have to be really careful when sanding veneer. It is really thin, so if you sand too much, you'll completely blow through it, um, and that's such a waste. So I wanna do everything I can to prevent that. So I'm just gonna tape off the face right along the edge here, and then we can get ready to veneer the edges. Uh, give it one quick final sanding. I already sanded it with 220. Um, and then we'll worry about attaching the base and the legs. It's been a, it's been a fun one so far, so let's keep going. All right, so I flipped this whole thing over. The walnut side is now on the bottom. The edges are all veneered, cut flush, sanded smooth. Now I have to, 
I was gonna make this all one piece and glue it up using dowels, but it'll be damn near impossible to move it around and possibly won't even fit through the doors of where this is going to. So I have these, uh, what are these? One and a quarter inch by 36 inch square tubes that are absolutely solid. <clears throat> I have them marked out, measured out and marked out where they'll be going. I'm going to route out pretty much a, a groove or a dado for these to slide in, doing about halfway, so half of these holes here. And then I can just fasten it. I think I'll permanently fasten it to the bigger side with construction adhesive, as well as some screws and washers. And then this side will just be screwed in. It won't be permanently attached. That way, if they ever need to move it or even just to get it through the door, this smaller part here will easily come apart and then these will just be permanently attached to the larger side. Or maybe I'll do it vice versa since these will be sticking out a little bit. Either way, it's gonna be permanently fastened to one. And I'm, I mean, these things are absolutely solid. And I also have, oh, let me get them for you. Okay, where was I? I also have these drop leaf um, hardware, I guess. Hardware for drop leaf tables. I know that each of these holds 50 pounds, so that's 100 pounds with just these two. And it's just for extra support, really. Um, I'll add these as well, just so this thing doesn't budge ever. I don't know how much weight these will hold. They feel really solid, but I don't see a, a weight capacity on them. So I have these two, so I know it'll hold 100 pounds for sure. And this, this smaller portion only weighs about 50 pounds. Um, and for alignment, for them to uh, easily take apart and put back together, I'll be adding half inch dowels. I already marked them out. Half inch dowels, so you just line it up with the dowels. These will have dados already. Everything will be pretty straightforward to get it back to the shape. Um, so I'll go ahead and start by routing out the dados for the square tubes and then I'll go ahead and fasten the leaves or actually I'll, I'll drill out the dowels first and then add the the leaf hinges um, yeah and this thing should be pretty solid so I have the legs coming in tomorrow I'm just gonna screw those on really straightforward um, but let's go ahead and finish this part and see what it looks like Got a little carried away while working. Didn't show you guys exactly what I did with all of this hardware, but I'll show you that in just a second. All the hardware is installed, including the dowels. These are just for alignment purposes. That's why they're so small. Um, but since I do have the tabletop facing up now, I'll just go ahead and slap some oil on this, get that out of the way. And when my roommate gets back to help me flip this thing back over, I'll oil up the bottom and then show you exactly what I did with all of these pieces. Um, I, I literally can't, phys I physically can't flip this thing around by myself. It's really heavy and it's incredibly just, just big. <laughs> it's a, uh, yeah, I've tried moving it and got a little, got a little dangerous. So don't want to ruin this. I'll wait for my roommate to get back, oil the bottom side, and then pretty much just show you what I did here. Let's get right into it. All right, so you saw me cut the dados um, for these steel rods. I have it loosely in here right now, but I'm just gonna attach maybe four screws on each side with some washers. These are just two inch screws and that should be good. Four on this side and then four on the top half. And these are the leaf hinges. Installing these is super easy. You just make sure that this hook here is a little bit past the seam of whatever, um, whatever leaf or tabletop you're mounting this to. You just wanna make sure, I have it on the bigger side so it's only supporting the smaller side. Um, and each of these hold 50 pounds, so 100 pounds total, plus I'll have a leg for the top part of it as well. So 
I've already tested it. They are super sturdy, actually. I'm really happy with these. Uh, maybe I'll leave a link down below. Got them for pretty cheap. And then the only other thing is, let's pick you up here. Went ahead and drilled out two holes for dowels. These are just half inch dowels. These aren't doing anything to hold the weight. This is just in case anybody ever needs to move it or for when reattaching it, you have not only these for alignment, but as well as these and their dados. Um, so everything should line up exactly how I have it set up here in the shop if they ever need to move it. Super straightforward. I just screwed these in with some wood screws and then like I said, two inch screws for the steel, steel bars. And that's about it. Um, what else? Yeah, nothing else. We're getting there. I'm gonna go ahead and oil up the top and attach the legs and we'll be good to go. Everything is oiled. It's already been a day um, since it's been drying. I've been waiting for the table legs to come in. They unfortunately got delayed by a couple of days or else this would have been completely done already, but they're super easy. Um, these legs were chosen by my client. They're really cool, really simple. Um, the bottom is adjustable, the foot is adjustable, so that if you're on something unleveled, uh, this will level it out for you. And it's just two pieces. Here's the actual leg itself, and then you just screw in the plate that'll be mounted to uh, the tabletop. So I'm just gonna screw these in, and I'll show you how I'm gonna pretty much attach these. I want the larger section to be able to stand on its own, so I'll have three legs there um, and then just one leg on the smaller section because it's going to be resting on the leaf uh, hinge as well as the square tubing. So I'll go ahead and attach these and, and show you how I'm doing it. All right, sorry I'm so far away, but I have these legs pretty much measured out to where I want them. I have the two on the corner inset about eight inches or exactly eight inches and then just centered along the angle and the center one i have six inches from the edge and i have that perfectly centered on the table um, i think this is going to give it enough support so that there isn't any tipping ever and i'll show you what i'm going to do with the smaller section uh, after this but it comes with all the hardware i just have to fasten some screws now so i'm going to go ahead drill some pilot holes and sink these in and then move on to the smaller side. Each of these legs, according to the description, do hold 200 pounds each, so this should be more than enough support with the four legs. Um, but we'll see over time, I guess. Like I said, the client chose these. I've never used these before, so we'll just see. Um, but they seem pretty sturdy. All right, let's get right into it. So to do this, I'm just using a Vix bit or a self-centering bit. I love using these with um, hinges and anything where you need to drill a hole precisely in the center. This just centers it and drills a pilot hole as you can probably see there. Um, so I'll just show you one and then I'll go ahead and do the rest of them. All right, I have the legs attached on the larger portion of the table. Now onto the smaller portion. Most of the weight on this side is going to be supported by the drop leaf hinge as well as the steel tubes. So I really only want to add support towards the end of it. Um, so I'll go ahead and center this up. I know that this is 32 inches wide here. Um, so at 16, that'll be center. And I'm just going to line it up with this center hole here on the base. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. I don't want to make any more marks. So that looks right about 16. And I'll inset it. Let's go four inches. So four inches to the edge and then 16. Perfect. Square that up just a little bit. Totally eyeballing it. These are cylindrical, so it doesn't really matter if it's not really square. Um, but that looks good. Four inches. And that should give it plenty of support. So I'll go ahead and drill some pilot holes and then fasten this down. Uh, it's finally done. My back hurts. <laughs> My back hurts. Uh. Oh, hey. Um, 
That was awkward. Didn't see you there. <laughs> I'm tired. All right, let's do that again. There you have it, guys. I finally got my friend uh, to give me a hand lifting this thing back up putting it on the ground. I had to move my six by four workbench out of the way, which is super heavy itself. This thing I can't move by myself. Um, so just a lot of heavy lifting this past week and a half, two weeks. Um, once again, sorry that this isn't coming out on Monday. Uh, there were just a couple of delays, so I couldn't get it out to you in time. But like I said from the in the intro, this was really straightforward to build using templates really saved a lot of time and stress about cutting out the actual top for this um, and let's see if i learned anything building this if i did learn anything i would not buy walnut ply to start i think i would just buy your standard birch and then la or veneer it when it's all done there are a couple of little scuff marks that i had to buff out and try to steam out there's one little one that I couldn't really get out at all, so that's unfortunate. Um, but if you're going to do something this big, I recommend just starting with birch ply and then veneering it after it's done and once you're completely done moving it around. Like I said, this thing was super heavy, is super heavy. Um, so when it was resting on the workbench with the, with the show face face down, um, there, were, there were just the little scuff marks. But I hope you guys followed along. I'm happy with the way it came out. It's absolutely beautiful, absolutely huge. And I'm sure my client's gonna love it and that's the most important thing. So if you guys like this video, shoot that thumbs up, subscribe if you're not already. Check me out on Instagram at Zuko Builds and I'll see you guys in a couple of weeks.